<laughs> Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider Podcast. I'm still here in Vegas. I've not lost all my money and reporting to you live from a storm drain just yet. But I did bump into a fellow Brit while I was here. I should have said expat, as she's now living in San Francisco, far away from the Brexit craziness. And her name was Rachel Lane. And she's the Digital Solutions Principal at Medallia.com, which is a leading experience management platform dedicated to collecting and segmenting feedback and ultimately driving growth and improvement. And in that short conversation, I quickly discovered she had a wealth of knowledge around digital and technology and how brands are actually missing a big piece of the experience puzzle. Not to mention a fantastic personality too. So I invited her onto the show today. And thankfully she said yes, so buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Vegas so we can speak with Rachel Lane, who's waiting for me on the show floor here at the summit to tell me all about Medallia. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Rachel. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I'm Rachel Lane. I'm Solution Principal for Medallia. Uh, I specialize in the digital world for Adalia, Medallia. So that's bringing voice of customer back in across the, the digital platforms. However, I do... I work in all different areas within Medallia, right, right across the verticals as well. I also do quite a lot in retail. I've got a background in retail prior to software. So, um, yeah, customer experience really is fundamental to, to what I've always done right from when I, when I first started out in the workforce back in retail. 30 years ago. Wow. Seems like only yesterday. <laughs> it does, it does. <laughs> so for people listening to this conversation all over the world, how would you describe the Adobe Summit and what do you enjoy most about this event? Well, uh, it's, it's a mix of, of many things. I love coming to the Adobe Summit because, you know, firstly, it's the engagement that you get from the audience. So you get a really diverse audience at the Adobe Summit. Um, we get to engage with, obviously, our customers um, already, but also meet meet people from organizations that aren't customers as well. So it's good for, from my perspective, and I work very strategically with our customer set, so it's good from my perspective to learn about, you know, those organizations that and their journey with customer experience, where they are at the moment, what they're planning to do. Um, I'm really keen on the whole practitioner side for the customer experience. Um, and, uh, you know, I love to have all manner of conversations with prospects about where they are in their maturity of their own programs, where voice of the customer and bringing in that experience management piece comes for them um, and talking to them about our best practices and some of the customer stories that we have as well. So it's a great opportunity for me to, to learn as well as give back because obviously I, I get to present at, at the Adobe Summit as well, which is something else that I like to do, share some of our findings that um, that we've gained, both from our customers, but also from the market research that we do too. So, yeah, it's a win-win for me. <laughs> cool. Now, predictably, of course, the big theme here is around the importance of creating digital experiences mm -hmm. and transforming the customer experience. Usual buzzwords are present, of course, but yeah. how important is the customer experience to brands now, do you think? massively and you know the beauty of it is that now Neil we're really able to measure that very very well uh, we're able to measure right across the the customer journey um, what I'm very keen to do is is to help organizations to bring in that voice of customer but in a very smart way so that that feedback that they're getting from their customers is rich um, and and it goes right across that journey from, you know, that initial engagement on the website to when they become a customer, to when they engage, when something goes wrong. All of those stages are, you know, key stages for a customer. So what I like to do is, is work with them and say, right, this is a really smart way that you can bring in that voice of customer at specific points across that journey. 
So there are so many different ideas around that superior customer experience and what it actually is. Mm. So to help listeners, that will be a mixture of consumers and business leaders and help them both understand how it impacts the world. Can you maybe set the scene and tell them how the customer experience will relate to such areas as retail, travel, hospitality, banking and insurance? Yeah, and you know, there's nuances to each of those verticals that you just mentioned. And some of those nuances are from the perspective of that vertical so for example with banking there's an industry that has you know it's worked through legacy systems it's been in existence for a long time and for many years it was an immovable object and it didn't necessarily have all of the calls to action that a vertical like retail has because it didn't necessarily have huge amounts of churn within its customers but still what was important to them across all those years was to really measure the success that they were having with their existing customers. And if you look at retail, for example, when we first started working with retailers, it's very much about acquisition, acquiring new customers and then, ch- and then keeping customers. So understanding what churn looks like and what the predictive modeling would look like for churn um, for retail. And what we see within each of these verticals is there's a level of maturity and they go through maturity at different stages. What we have now is really a convergence that the customer is driving. So the customer, you know, we've for many years been chasing the fire truck with customers. Customers have always been ahead in terms of their expectations for their experiences, but never more so than now because we've had lots of uh, new players in the market, niche players, players that are very agile. In most of those vertical sectors, we have agile players now that don't have all these legacy systems. Um, And that really has has created a, a playing field for customers that, you know, is not by no means a level playing field. Um, So it's very hard for some of those older verticals and some of those older organizations within that vertical to really compete and differentiate themselves on a service level. So that makes understanding CX and measuring CX really, really critical to them. Um, So, you know, there's different reasons why we work with different organizations. Um, There's different levels of maturity and, you know, Honestly, Neil, this is a this is a business for me that I see. Um, I'm going to be employed in this for years to come. Yeah. Uh, I feel sure about that. Um, simply because you know we have to keep reiterating our service models if we're to even meet the expected standards now that that the customers are uh, have come to know. So this is my third year here, and I've attended the summit. This is the third year I've attended the Adobe Summit and seen the experience economy evolve over those three years. But what are the key pieces of the experience puzzle that brands are missing out on still, do you think? Well, I think when we think about, and particularly when we look upstairs today, at those Adobe partners that there are exhibiting up there at the now vast array of Adobe solutions that there are um, available, we can see... One thing becomes very clear to me, and and when we think about customer experience and and how it's evolved over the years, what customers are expecting now are very seamless journeys across an omni-channel that we as businesses have provided for them. The struggle is creating that in a very seamless way, and we can only see by the plethora um, of those applications and technologies upstairs as to how difficult sometimes a business can make it to really connect all of those to create that that seamless journey. And I think you know the more of of these applications and technologies that are deployed, the more we're creating in some ways a mind map for the customer to navigate. And it can be quite difficult for the business themselves. However, um, what I also see when we talk about DevOps, for example, Mm -hmm. for for those organizations, is that they're starting to become very agile in their approach to development. They're bringing that voice of the customer into their development. 
they're having open APIs. So the important thing for an organization is to work with technologies that will speak to each other, that they can fully integrate, that they can identify that consumer from the beginning of their journey right across multiple channels and platforms and at the end of it have what they believe to be a seamless experience. So I think, you know, it's it's all ahead of us. There are few players that are doing that in a in a beautiful end-to-end way yeah. um however you know it is all there and i feel this year more than previous years actually as i talk to vendors um on on the floor i think there's a real sense a palpable sense of actually working together so that we can create those seamless experiences that brands need Fantastic. Now, at Medallia, of course, you're on a mission to create a world where companies are loved by both their customers and equally their employees, and that's something we don't talk about enough. So Mm. can you tell me a little bit more about that mission and why it's so important to remember your employees in these customer-centric times? Yeah, and I've already had a a couple of conversations today where people have said to me, what comes first? Is it the employee or is it the customer? And, you know, the answer is, of of course, there isn't really an answer because... Successful brands today will hire employees for attitude and they build that aptitude and they can build that aptitude from the voice of the customer. So it has to be um, an engagement that's hand in hand, employee and customer. I, I would say that they, they both play equally important parts within that journey. Um, what we're seeing now is, is a real evolution with, with very large brands um, investing in in serious employee programs that you know we'd never seen before, um, and we're starting to see that mature at a very quick rate. So two years ago, there there were brands that were tentatively engaging with employee experience, starting to to survey more than just an annual relationship survey. And I think some of the early stories that came out of that was so significant. We we're able to correlate employee engagement with customer experience and when you start to to do those correlations that actually show that you know while you've got highly uh, engaged employees you have a higher uh, mps or customer satisfaction therefore you know an improved profit margin it's those types of, of numbers and kpis that really are driving these programs now so those early stories have been really significant in that approach um, and certainly one of the fastest growing areas of our business now um, and you know whilst traditionally you will see a business come to us and they will deploy customer experience first and then perhaps employee experience on top of that we're now seeing them deploying both simultaneously so and I think that's certainly going to, to mature a lot more. But there's a lot of investment in employee experience now. Mm, cool. So do you think we're approaching the moment where brands that don't take experience management seriously are going to get left behind? Or are we already there? Um, yeah, we are already there, I think. You know, many, many organizations are, are already in catch-up mode on the customer experience piece alone. So you can see, you know, as we start to put those stories out that the most successful brands have, you know, the the higher percentages in MPS. And, you know, there's, there's some so many very strong stories out now that we know that customer experience directly relates to an improved bottom line. And, and you know, customer success will undoubtedly drive um, higher lifetime customer value, lower churn rates you know there's lots of kpis now that businesses are really managing very closely in a way that they weren't previously so they're able to see the tangible benefits from that so when you leave this year's adobe summit is it too early to ask what your key takeaways will be and what you're looking forward to exploring in the future and maybe what's just in your mind when you sit on that plane going back home yeah, usually. I mean, there's a couple of things that, that I look for from something like this. So and one of the key things is to help me understand what does the future look like within customer experience? And I'll usually pick up one or t- two nuggets that I 
deep dive on further over the next coming months to see, you know, is this going to be a thing or is is this something that is a nice to have but not a need to have? So I'm, I haven't had a chance so far, but my yeah. plan is tomorrow to go out and look. What what are those nuggets that I'm going to take from this conference? Um, but certainly, you know, there's been a lot of talk about employee engagement, and, I, and that for me is is music to my ears because we we know that that's a successful pattern that's emerging. Um, but also, when I look at other vendors and and the types of products that they're putting to, to market, both in marketing communications and voice of customer and AI and all of that good stuff. So I'll start to think about what I always call what's the art of the possible. And mm. so I look for differences between the art of the possible this year and the art of the possible last year because we know that you know we're pretty much working on a 24-month 20, cycle now when we're planning out some of those you know uh development opportunities so i'll try and come away with what i think is a futuristic view of what businesses can do how we can connect to that customer even more so than we are today and what are some of those key outcomes that we can drive from that that's what i'll be looking for and what about yourself and Medali? Is there anything else you can share with us today about the road ahead? Or maybe leave us with a teaser or two. Ooh, leave you with a <laughs> teaser. Now you're asking. Um, I think, I mean, we've grown exponentially. We, we started off in 2001. And, you know, here we are in, in 2019. And I think, you know, this year is probably going to be our most exciting year ever. But each year that comes along, there's, there's new things that, that we focus on as a business, we double down on as a business. And I think there's certain years when we really capitalize on our growth of the year before. And I think this is certainly going to be one of those years. Last year was a, a huge year for Medallia in terms of its growth, not just in sales, but its, its growth in its uh, strategic placement within the voice of customer marketplace. We've seen a lot of activity um, within our vertical, um, and you know we're we're a world leading player in this now. Yeah. So we we know that you know over the next twelve to twenty four months we can capitalise on that. We can bring a lot more of those great stories that we have um, with working with our customers to market. Um, so yeah, we've we've got a significant story ahead, Neil. I can't tell you any more than that, <laughs> but it's you know it's certainly exciting times. So if anyone would like to follow that story and learn mm-hmm. about the kind of work that you're doing, what's the best way of doing that? And equally, just reaching out to a member of your team if they did have any questions around our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our we have. Uh, blogs and we have uh, within our website we have lots of areas where we engage with our customers um, and and any visitors on the website so website is always the first place that I will direct people to there's a contact us on there um, give us some information about the the type of uh, information that you're looking for and yeah absolutely we will we will get back to you with that but uh, Cool. Well, I know you've got to dash off and leave me in a moment and go straight on stage to speak to a couple of hundred people. I really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to me today, so thank you. Thanks a lot, Neil. One of the biggest themes I've noticed here is not about tech at all or any of the big buzzwords. I'm noticing 17,000 smart people from all over the world just wanting to share their stories, their problems and any solutions and how they're making a difference. And I've not noticed any arrogance or difficult people with delusions of grandeur. And let's take Rachel today. I mean, after our interview, she had to dash to present in front of 250 people. But she took the time to speak with me, and that goes a long way with me, because I would be panicking in a corner somewhere (laughs) if the roles were reversed. So, Rachel, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. And a big thank you to each and every one of you listening, too especially because of just how many podcast episodes I've been sending your way. And let's, you know what, let's do it all again tomorrow. But I'm going to bow out now before I go all sentimental on you all. So all that's left for me to say is a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.